Welcome back to my workshop. Now it's still lockdown time. We're still going stir crazy, trying to find things to do. Uh, and for the last week or so, we've been watching on the telly, we've been watching Kirsty Allsop uh, with a Keep Crafting and Carry On program on Channel 4. So one of the things she built there was a bug house uh, or bug, bug hotel. So I thought, well, I might as well do that. Uh, now I think obviously she's made it with stuff she's got hanging around the house. Luckily, I've got the workshop. I've got plenty of stuff hanging around. Uh, and for the last few days, um, we've been making some more material, which is this. Let me show you. This big pile of wood here, which is uh, 15 pallets that we've managed to get hold of. Uh, I've stripped them down, and that's for um, a project that's going on in the garden. And the problem is, for me to use that, I need to use this thing here, which is my planar thicknesser. Now, to get that, I need to move all that stuff. So the idea is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a little bug house. Uh, but the problem is, I need that wood and I need a thicknesser. Uh, so before I do anything, I've got to move that. I won't film that, it's a bit boring. But I'll be back in a while with some material. Right, as promised, I'm back. Uh, the wood now is all gone, uh, so I can now get to my plane of thicknesser. Uh, I've selected the material I'm going to use, which is this palette here. Uh, it's got a bit of a green colour, so at some point I think it's been a bit mossy. Uh, I'm going to use this, but first I've got to chop out all the, uh, the holes, or as many of the holes as I can. That will tell me how much material I've got to play with. Then I'll run it through the planar thicknesser to make it into nice wood. Right, it's the next day. Um, now, at this point of the video, I should have been showing you how I was uh, stripping all of this green nasty stuff off and turning it into some decent wood. But there was a Yesterday was a complete disaster. It was a calamity. My, my chip extractor broke and then my planar thickness had broke and then this happened and that happened. So, none of that's going to be covered. Uh, but now we've got our materials. Let's quickly go over our design. Okay, so today's design, uh, we're going to use our usual software of a, a piece of paper and a pencil. Uh, right, so since now I've got an A3 sheet of paper, I might as well do it this big. That's about the right size. So simply, it's going to be quite a long hotel, uh, probably about this big, slant of the roof like this. Then we're going to have maybe a, an upper floor. And here we're going to have loads of little circles for things like bees and flying insects to, uh, to live in. Then down the bottom here, we're probably going to have some pine cones here something like this yeah with a few bits of moss stuck in the middle in the middle we'll probably have some twigs like this uh, and on this side some more leaves and things here yeah so this whole area will just be for crawling buggy insects Okay, that's my plan. It'll probably be about this size. That's what it's going to look like. And our material is here now. So, let's get on with that. Okay, so that's the, uh, the top and the bottom cut uh, and the sides. Uh, now what I've got to do is cut a back panel to cover basically the whole of the back. Uh, now all I'm going to do is use probably four strips of this uh, cut to the height of the house. Okay, so that's another couple of cuts. Get on with that.
Okay, so for my four back pieces are now cut. Now what I want to do is join these together to make a board. Now all I'm going to do is no joinery involved here. I'm literally just going to glue these all together and then clamp them, okay? Clamp them in my clamps. All right, so let me get on with that. Right, so now we can leave this to dry. Uh, let's move it out of the way. Okay, and then we can start on the uh, the sides and the top and the bottom. Okay, so we've got our top and our bottom and our two sides. Now, all I'm gonna do is glue these together and luckily I've got a small nail gun. Uh, if you haven't got a nail gun, it's okay. You can just use a normal small hammer and some tacks. All I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the edges and then stick a couple of little tacks in there until it dries. So literally a bead of glue on here and one on here. Obviously this is going to be held with the back panel as well. So that's where all the strength will come from. Now from here, you can either clamp it in place while you stick some nails in it. Luckily, I've got one of these, which is a picture framing clamp. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that around it. Oh, this is a bit of a pain. All right, so I've got it roughly clamped into place, place now. Now all I want to do is stick a couple of little bread nails in there. Okay, so I've got my glue in the joint, I've <clears throat> got it held in place, and I'm literally just going to put a small tack in here. And one at the bottom, making sure it's square. <laughs> Okay, so it's glued, it's clamped, it's got some pins in it. Now all I want to do is quickly check to make sure it's square before I leave it to set, which it isn't. So give it a little bit of a twist. Okay, so that's square. Yeah, we can live with that. Give it a little bit of a wipe. Get rid of all the glue. Make sure it's square and leave that to dry. Right, so while I'm waiting for all that to dry, <clears throat> I've quickly cut my two pieces of roof. Now, I can either just join these together like this, because obviously it's gonna be a peak, but because the angle isn't exactly 90 degrees, there's some funny angles going on. Now, if you're anything like me, you was never very good at trigonometry. So what I've done is I've literally drawn out a full scale picture. Okay, so this is the bottom, and obviously this is the roof, okay? So this is the right size I want. Now, what I wanna do is, I found this midpoint here, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay my wood on this drawing and use it as reference so I can cut my angles. Let me show you how I'm gonna do that. Okay, so I've now got my drawing here. Uh, I've got my piece of wood cut slightly larger. Now, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up the outside edge corner here with the peak of the roof okay and then follow the line along okay and then I'm going to mark up the wood so using a sharp pencil now I've drawn a vertical line here okay and all I need to do is mark where that is 
Okay, and then the same on here, mark where this line is. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so now I know from this corner here to this line here is my top angle. Okay, so all I need to do is strike a line across there if I can from that mark to the corner. Okay, so I haven't actually measured anything at all. Okay, and then do the same on the bottom here. Okay, so now what I have is my bottom line here and my top line here. So now my mitre saw uh, won't actually cut this acute angle. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to sand that. So I'm going to cut it roughly and then sand it on my sander. Uh, this angle here, I think my mitre saw will be able to do that so I can cut that. All right, so I've got to make two of those. So then the roof will be the right angle. All right, let me cut those now. Okay, so without actually measuring any angles, uh, I've managed to sand these edges down and cut these edges. So now this joint at the top is uh, flush and these two should be flush on the top of the roof when I put it together. All right, obviously you can do it with a protractor if you've got one. I haven't got one, so this is the quick method I've used. Okay, again, if it was a fine piece of furniture, that would be different, but this is for bugs, uh, so it should be okay. Okay, because I want this to be the uh, poshest bug house on the street, <coughs> um, I've cut a load of more pieces of um, old pallet wood here uh, into slats for the roof or shingles. Okay, so just basically like this, rounded off one edge. Here we go. Uh, so in theory, the roof is going to look a bit like this. Okay, I haven't stacked these on yet. Uh, I'll do that when the roof is on. But yeah. That should be well posh. Right, <clears throat> okay, so they're back in board and the uh, box have both been drying now for an hour or so. Let's take the clamps off and see if they stick together. And then we'll have to give the back in board a bit of a sand down, I think. Okay, so there's me back in board. See, I've got glue squeeze out here. So I've got to get rid of all that, but the board is stuck together. Right, that's that bit. Okay, so we have our box, we have our backing board. Starting to look like a box now. Okay, what's next? Right, so now we're going to cut the backing board. So it's the same size as we want it. Uh, I've just placed the uh, the roof in place. I'm literally going to draw around the box to give me my lines to cut. So I'll cut those, I think, on the bandsaw. Right, so let's stick this box to the backing plate. We'll do the same thing again. Just one bead of glue all the way around.
Hopefully it won't fall apart. In the top of our bug house here, I was going to make loads of holes in the top for things like bees to hang out and stuff. Uh, so what I've done from our scale drawing here, uh, I've just quickly copied this shape, this triangle in the loft here, uh, and I've cut one of these so far. All I've got is four more bits of pallet wood. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these triangles out of each of these then stick them together so I end up with a big wedge that I can then slot into the loft and I'm going to drill loads of holes in it so the bees have got somewhere to go. Okay, this my triangles cut. Now I've sanded these down quickly, or I actually planed them. Uh, all I want to do now is stick them all together, so the same again. Right. Yeah. Leave that to dry. Okay, so while I'm waiting for the, uh, the box here to dry, <clears throat> I've got a couple of little partitions here I want to put in here. Uh, so again, all I'm going to do is glue on the edges, put them in, clamp them into place, and I can leave that to dry. Right, okay, so let's stick the uh, well posh shingles on the roof. Right, so we must be nearly there because the workshop is completely trashed. So uh, there's stuff everywhere. Right, during our hour exercise, when we went out earlier on, we collected some stuff. Uh, right, on our little plan, we had some pine cones here, then we had some twigs, and then we had some leafy stuff. Okay, so what have we got in our basket? Let's tip it out. We got all of this stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, probably hot glue the pine cones into place and then maybe some twigs um, and then put some moss in there. Okay, let me carry on with that.
All right, so last couple of little touches now. I've got all the uh, foliage in there. Uh, just going to put the uh, bees house in the top. And obviously I've got to put one of my Frank's Little Workshop tokens into here. Stick them on there and then that's it, done. So I'll just do that and then we'll see what we've got. Right, it's all done. So that's it, it's all done. After a bit of a disastrous start where I broke my plane the thicknesser, um, but I managed to fix it, so we're okay. So we managed to turn a pallet, which was uh, was being thrown away anyway, into our design here, which was a bug hotel with some pine cones, some twigs, and some leaves and moss and stuff, and somewhere for the bees to live. Okay, that was the plan. And this is what we made. That's the back. Okay, so that's it. It's pretty much what we designed. Um, got our pine cones here. We've got some moss and some twigs and uh, some more moss here. Okay, here's where the bees and that are gonna live. Got my little logo here. Cause I put it on all my things now. Uh, well posh roof. Now I've coated it with um, just some fence paint. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll leave it to weather a little bit and then I'll give it another coat. I'll find somewhere in the garden now to put this. It's gotta be the poshest bug house in the world. Um, and I hope you like that build. So this was inspired by uh, Kirsty's Keep Crafting and Carry On, which is on channel four at the moment. Um, I hope you like this build. It was made with bits of pallet and stuff that I had hanging around anyway. Um, so the only thing I had to get was the pine cones, which we got when we went out for a walk. All right. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Uh. Okay, what's next?